Call this May 1st council work session to order. We were in a, uh, discussing some personnel issues in executive session. I'm sorry for the delay. Uh, I also spoke with council uh, regarding tonight's meeting. We may not meet next week, so if we need a second meeting, it'll probably be towards the middle or the end of the month. So there will be things added onto the agenda if anybody, any council members, and then at the end of this, we'll suspend the rules and proceed to a voting meeting. Okay? So we have several people here this evening. First, uh, I'm trying to think who we want to go with. Uh, I think Mill runs in a hurry. They want to get out of here. So. <laughs> Good evening. Hi, my name is Michael Hollister. It's nice to see all of you again. We're here for a. Uh, you got to speak into that oh, yes, at the podium, or you want to walk with that microphone. But it's, if you stay still, the camera will get you better. Sure. Okay. Hi. <laughs> hello. My name is Michael Hollister. Uh, I'm the attorney for the Mill Run Project, and we're here tonight to provide you with an update. And <laughs> there we go. All right. So where we stand right now is we have, uh, we applied for and received our permit to renovate the interior of the two existing two-story building. And that's going to start as soon as possible. Um, we anticipate having the facade of the entire facility done by August of this year. And our game plan presently is once we receive our zoning and land use, or licenses, which we're going to be applying for probably in the next 30 to 45 days. We anticipate having doors open December 2018. So that's really a sort of a 30,000 foot overview. Um, what we thought you might uh, want to hear a bit about tonight is our land use plans. So I have a couple of uh, handouts here that we also have our engineer who has a blow up, but it might be easier just for everyone practically to look at a, a handout. So I'm just going to step away from the microphone for a minute and pass this around. Okay. All right. Thank you. Sadly, I can't take credit for that. Thank you. Sir? No. <coughs> Before we, um, Thank you. before we get started on uh, the land use specifics, did anyone have any general topic questions about the pro project at this point? Well, Mr. White said that you guys wanted to come in this evening to speak to council either tonight or next week. He was notified that we may not meet next week, so that's why we're here this evening to give us an overview of what I know originally it was going to be done over a period of time, but now you guys want to go full steam ahead and get this building done, which is a plus. So, Well, if, if no one has any sort of general broad uh, questions for me, then I'm going to hand it over to our engineer, Heath Dumas. Yeah, sure. I'll take that. Yeah. Just bring that mic with you. Oh, so talking to the, yeah, talking to that little microphone. Good evening, uh, ladies and gentlemen of council. Um, the site itself has gone through uh, some evolution from when we first started uh, to get involved with the project. Um, the lot fronts on multiple streets. Um, it has uh, an existing building, which was utilized as a hospital at one point. This is going to be converted uh, into both a uh, medical office use, assisted living, and um, I apologize, the other term is uh, intensive uh, uh, skilled nursing care. Um, the proposed additions to the building include a three-story expansion 
uh, on the north side of the building. Uh, the existing building right now is two stories high, and they're going to build a three-story addition on top of that. Uh, along with that addition uh, is a new uh, portico vestibule entrance area. Uh, and along with that will be a future uh, therapy expansion and indoor pool facility. Uh, the site itself has gone through several uh, cycles of uh, revisions. At this point, we have a proposed uh, almost loop road to connect the westerly parking lots through to the easterly parking lots. Uh, at this point, there is a net, no net gain on impervious surface. Uh, we're still going to sharpen our pencil a little bit to try and reduce our footprint on impervious to <coughs> lessen the impact on proposed stormwater design. Um, Can I just, I'm sorry to interrupt for one yes, second. Um, just because I know there, were, there was a concern and discussion earlier, so I just wanted to make sure we could clarify just in case people can't see it. That road is still on the inside of the Absolutely. property, not on the, the right of way, the roadway itself. The loop connection between the west and the east parking lots is within our property. It's not within the right of way. It's not utilizing the existing streets. Thank you. You're welcome. <coughs> That's pretty much. Um, uh, Sorry, Mike. No, no. <laughs> That's a 30,000 square foot uh, uh, view in a nutshell. Uh, we're anticipating submission for zoning variances. Uh, within the next one to two weeks. Um, and from that, uh, if the outcome is positive, <coughs> we'll be going forward with land development post haste. Great. Any questions for Heat? Thank you. Any, who else is speaking? <coughs> Good evening, Council. Residents of the uh, Crystal Borough, I'm Bob White. I'm the director of the Redevelopment <coughs> Authority. Have been for two dozen years, and I got to tell you that uh, it's an honor to be here with all you people that have been uh, supportive of what the Redevelopment Authority has helped us for our do. Never did the Redevelopment Authority or accounting or anybody else do it. it was always right here, motivated to do things, and it takes me back. To one of your people that's here yet, maybe some more living somewhere, I <laughs> know Mr. Saxon's sitting here as the mayor, and he was involved in 1988 when they acquired the Purex property. And uh, that was where it started. They went through that. I came in 1993. 1993 looked like a third world country. It was a blacktop and concrete jungle with hardly anything growing. So the Arena Bomb Authority in this borough in the mid, around 1995-96 started to clean that up when they started the Act 2 program. Spent a couple million bucks over there cleaning it up so it could be anything. And uh, as I look at it today when I drive by, it's just when you come down and turn right, you used to see a bunch of buildings with the glass knocked out right out on the road all the way to the, to the Dow building. If you remember the Dow building had all kind of manufacturing plant there. We tore that down and actually turned that into a first class office. We have Lennox, 400 jobs. We have other people there also that have about another 100 jobs. So these are things that came about because of the people in this council, people that have worked with us from day one. Now all of you weren't here, but all of you have always worked with us and that's, that's the best thing. Uh, the North Wilson Avenue, most people probably don't even remember this, but we put in North Wilson Avenue Street. It was actually right at the end of the Wilson Drive because every truck came out of that industrial park right through the uh, residential section down Radcliffe Street and out Green Lane. We took all that traffic off of there again with the assistance from uh, all the people in this borough. Mill Run. It's been something that we've all worked on for more years than we can think, and all of us want to see it done tomorrow. And uh, there's hiccups here and there. There's things that have to happen. Things are falling into place. I can see it moving along. They've got a couple more uh, medical permits that they got to get, but they're moving forward with all the renovations inside. They'll do the outside. 
hopefully this uh, time next year when you come around the outside will be 100 percent under control and that's what we all want to see we don't want to see it go that's for sure and the one i'd be remiss if i didn't mention one of the best properties you had in bristol and uh, your president of council is the one who brought it to get it done and that was the bristol steel treatment plant i always called it our mixed-use property it's had a trailer on top you could live in an office in the bottom and they did the manufacturing of stainless steel work all on one site didn't have to go far to work one of the other things uh, the grundy powerhouse how many remember that over a decade we worked with that more than that probably and at one time we were going to have a nice beautiful apartment complex the bottom fell out of the world everything went down to give you how an idea redevelopment authority used to use we we fund ourselves not funded by any direct tax dollars just earn the money to get paid the one thing that we could get is interest the reason i'm going here is i used to get about 120,000 a year interest on the six million dollars that's not ours but we're allowed to spend the interest that same money makes about 13,000 today hence you guys have a, had a ton of money on your uh, ice rinks until the bottom falls out. It's hard to pay for those things. The uh, f facade, part, uh, facade improvement plant, plan down here on Mill Street, you saw 10 or 12 really nice new facades. There's another one coming, so there'll be more nice looking facades down there. You guys got that 500 million, 500,000. That good one. 500,000. dancing in the street. Between all that, when you look at it, you know, it's it's just adding up in Bristol. Bristol's moving. Bristol's going forward. Uh, you know, the Rudy Obama Authority certainly has been involved in funding a lot of things with the borough. We never funded everything. We just funded a portion of them. Some of them are the municipal and police department buildings, the public works building, the sewer truck, emergency responder radios, which we just did for, I guess that was for the fire companies. And uh, uh, of course, uh, we did the Bristol School, elementary school out there, remediation. Piled dirt set there for years that everybody wondered what to do. And we were able to negotiate 75% of the cost of getting that leveled off, capped with two foot of clean dirt, and actually we're able to get the DEP to agree to let us put blacktop down as a cap. We didn't really go to build a road, but that's how we capped it. Same thing with the tennis courts. So we didn't really build, I hear conversations once in a while, we didn't build a ball field. That wasn't what we were doing, but we did grade it to whatever the grades was on those plans. So that's just a cap job. Something I did, I don't know how many people remember the burned out store next to Mignoni's for a couple decades. Well, that was a partner and I took that property and put 16 condos in there. So now you have 14 residents that can walk around town, stop at the restaurant. Stocks is gonna have another 10 or 20. So as you look at all the things, when I went to to uh, conferences where we talked about how to revitalize a town. One of the main things they said was to put first class housing over top of your, res uh, over top of your uh, real estate or your commercial work. So you have your people there. So we're making that move here. Uh, I can tell you one other one that probably nobody remembers except for the president of council was the, uh, I came to work one morning the old candle factory looked like a Roman candle flaming up in the air. Set there for a long time before it got picked up and developed. And now it's a uh, beautiful home. I think that uh, the left turn lane on Green Lane, the left turn turn signal. When you used to get out of my office on Wilson Avenue on Friday night, it was like a half hour to get to Route 13. So the Redevelopment Authority, along with the Enterprise Zone and uh, all the uh, legislators, were able to get that left turn lane put in there way before it was ever done. Against all odds, they might say. Uh, we, consider, we converted many houses from four apartments into two single-family homes. 
over the past 20 some 20 some years uh, biggest thing is uh, the docks I can tell you from my heart it really is something to see and something that you can be proud of because if you all remember back in 19 or 2005 uh, Nick Marino and I put a boat out there, a paddle boat, and tried it for a couple years. And I remember talking to people, they say, that's never going to work, never going to be a dock. Well, there's a dock, and I've got to give you a lot of credit. That's something that's going to help bring economic development to this community. And I'd be remiss if I didn't say one of my board members is one of the biggest supporters of this town does so much I can't even believe. I can't get him to come to meetings all the time, but he makes sure he's there to raise and to bar things. And Bill, Bill Pazza was definitely invest, you know, important in getting the facade grants and getting the other one. I know that many of you sitting here, uh, well, before I hit that, let's say many, there are many loans made to small businesses in this town from the Redevelopment Authority, from the County of Bucks, and I know that everybody's question is, what's going on at Riverfront North? What's going on with Island View 2? Those of you that you can tell there's a problem it's in the litigation. Uh, we're hopeful that in the next couple of months we'll see action again. Uh, the Rehoboam Authority has been patient. We're not part of the project, but as a Rehoboam Authority director, my board, the county commissioners, this is a big, big thing for us getting that done. And we're going to do everything we can to get that developer or another developer to get in there and finish that property. So we're going to work on it. But I do want to thank you guys for being motivated. When I come to talk about something, even things I know probably are not going to work, I bring them and let you listen. It's been good working with you for 24 years, for those of you that have been here. And uh, hopefully another 24. Okay. Thanks, Bob. Bye. I know the owners of that property are here. I don't know if you guys want to say anything or. One of you guys, the owners of that property, just stand up and be recognized. lot of discussion through town that this would never never happen and Greg I want to thank you and Lorraine personally because I know that's something that was on the top of your list and to see something come true from a council standpoint all your hard work and everything that you try to make things happen when you see this really come to fruition is really rewarding and I, I want to thank the redevelopment authority and you guys for believing in bristol and the two council people that work tirelessly to make this happen so thank you <laughs> i apologize mr Catrocci. i know you want to you wanted to speak but Good evening. My name is Louis Quatrochi of 800 Radcliffe Street. I'm one of five generations of a family that has lived and worked in their entire lives in historic Bristol Borough. I'm also a South Ward Councilman. I've chosen to step on this side of the rail tonight to speak as part of the public rather than as a councilman. My words tonight have not been discussed with any of the council people nor any of the administrators. These words are my opinions and my feelings. No one else should be held accountable for them. And if someone has any issues or comments and would like to discuss them with me at a later time, I'm open for that. It didn't take a small business revolution to make me proud of Bristol. I have felt extremely proud of the bar all my life. Although the small business revolution has made it much more exciting now that the entire country knows how special this town is. However, I wasn't very proud of the last month's council meeting. I witnessed the most vile attack on our council president 
and a veteran, a veteran councilwoman for no reason other than pure meanness. Mr. Devine, who at a previous meeting told us how he was just an average Joe and represented the common man. He turned around and attacked the council people for not being high school graduates. He expounded on how he was not only a high school graduate, but also a college graduate. He went from commoner to elitist in one week. I hope all those average Joes have their diplomas in their hands when they look to Mr. Devine for representation. My judgment of a person's character is not based on what credentials they possess, but how they raise their families and how they treat their friends and their community. I have known those two people most of their lives, and I'm proud to have them as friends and council people. They have raised great families and are very supportive of, this, of everyone, everyone and everything that goes on in this town. Most of us know education doesn't make you smart. Obviously, it doesn't make you learn civility or manners, nor does it teach you leadership or determination. I received a Bachelor of Science from Drexel University, but I got my real education on 529 Bath Street in Bristol. Mm. Recently, I had a conversation with a dear friend of mine who's been an educator for over 50 years. John Mundy told me we were lucky to have been raised in Bristol. We received our MBAs and PhDs on the streets of Bristol. Most of our mentors didn't have college degrees. They may not even have graduated from high school. It didn't matter. You know when someone is smart, so you listen and you learn. At last month's meetings, we went from the high of honoring the Raising the Bar group who represented hundreds of members of the organization and thousands of supporters who voted for Bristol Bar in the small business revolution. We went from that to vicious attacks filled with half-truths and innuendo. I don't know why Mr. Devine is making these vicious attacks. I don't know who is mentoring him or what motiv motivates him. I assume he wants to hurt Mr. DiGiuseppe and the council, but he is hurting the entire town and jeopardizing the momentum that we are enjoying right now. It needs to stop, and it needs to stop now. I know Mr. DiGiuseppe does not need me to defend him. His record stands on its own. But I would like to let you know some of the things I know about Ralph DiGiuseppe for the past 50 <coughs> years. He may not have graduated high school, but he's one of the smartest people I know. I've served on boards and committees with doctors, lawyers, and titans of industry. But I know a few people with his leadership abilities and determination. Years ago, when he was in his early 20s, he came to me to discuss how he could take his father's construction business and improve it. He laid out a business plan, which included marketing, management, and financing. And it was worthy of a Wharton School MBA. Of course, he didn't know it was a business plan because he didn't go to college. I don't think I knew what a good business plan was because I only learned about it in theory. I did realize how good it was when eight years later he'd accomplish what he thought would take, or excuse me, eight months later, he'd accomplish what he thought would take two years. And within those two years, he became one of my top customers and remains there today. Another example of his leadership outside of government and business is when he resurrected the St. Anne's Fair. He asked my wife Sissy and I if we would help him with the fair. He's a hard man to say no to because he's always doing for others without being asked. We started then with a couple dozen workers and he grew that fair to an event with hundreds of workers, hundreds of volunteers, and thousands of attendees and has raised hundreds of thousands of dollars for St. Anne's School and now St. Mark's. Officials from the county, state, and federal government stop in to show their support of the fair and to share their appreciation of Ralph's hard work. Even celebra celebrities like Ed Rendell and Rudy Giuliana have visited. State Senator Tommy Thomason said when he's in Harrisburg and the secretary says, 
Ralph's on the phone. He knows who it is, even without hearing his last name. He said he's like Sher. He doesn't. He said he always knows what Ralph wants when he calls him. He wants money to fund projects in Bristol Borough. And he says he's always very anxious to help because every project that he's done has been a success under Ralph's leadership. I wonder if those of us with college diplomas could get those same results. I'm being selfish when I say I'm glad he didn't go to higher education because he may have chosen a different career path and my business and the borough would have suffered because they wouldn't have enjoyed the benefits of his business acumen and leadership. Thank you. Would you like to discuss this now or wait till it's my turn to talk? No, I discuss that as a matter of the public. If anyone wants to discuss it okay. and not lose uh, council time, I will do that right. later. I'll, I'll do the same. Uh, we're, we're not done. Wait, we're not we done. I'm dealing with people. Wait, you just went out. I'm going to go out too. I mean, I don't think it's fair. Right? I don't think it's Yeah, my name is Tony Devine. I'm at 741 Manton Street. I'm also a councilman in the North Ward. And I want to talk about the, the issues that Mr. Quattrochi's brought up. And, and I'm glad that you love Ralph and, you know, anything he does you see in, in you know, in rose-colored glasses, that's fine. I said, but the reality of, the reason I brought up that he wasn't a high school graduate wasn't to, to say that I don't respect people or, or people who don't graduate from high school can't be successful. <coughs> Clearly, because my, my own dad didn't graduate high school, didn't go to 11th grade, and he was the most influential person in my life. So uh, that's the first thing. The second reason I brought it up was because uh, Mr. DiGiuseppe likes to roast people when they come up for public participation. So he was making a regular resident feel stupid and it pissed me off. And since I get frustrated, I can't stand bullies. I never could. There's people in here that know me growing up. And Ralph, whether you love him or not, he's a bully, Lou. And whether you see it that way is because you're on the same level as him, right? But if you were just a common person come up here speaking and he talked to you a certain way, it would, you, you wouldn't, you, uh, the, you have thin skin. You wouldn't come back up and, and, and speak. These other people come up and speak because they're residents and they're concerned. So the reason I brought up that Ralph was not a high school graduate wasn't to say anything but to, if you're so smart and you want to make other people feel dumb, you didn't even graduate high school. It's, it's a comment that wasn't brought on by me. It was started by Mr. DiGiuseppe. And since I'm up here, I will discuss, I didn't, I didn't hear you defending anybody else when Mr. D. Giuseppe sued me, right? He sued me personally. Did you come to my defense or did you feel that that was the right thing to do to use Bo's, Bo's money to, to, uh, uh, to uh, use his vendetta or his retali retaliation for me saying something that he didn't like? Did you come to my defense, Mr. Quattrochi? Who's being a bully now? How is it being, being a bully now? I will tell you. You're trying to bully me. I'm not, Mr. Petrochi. Right. It's not being a bully. I'll tell you what, a I'm bully. I'm trying to deal with you on a, on a gentlemanly basis. This is a gentleman. You don't allow it to happen, Tony. You don't allow it to happen. Right. You're the bully. Okay. Mr. Quattrochi, just so you know, the definition of is somebody who instigates and starts things, right? Just, to me, is Tony, once Tony, once I start, Tony, right? Once I that. once once somebody starts something, Tony, right? Tony. It's no longer up to them, Tony. right? I'm get if, they, if they if they if they want to be in recess, that's the point. That's the reason you're Well, then don't say it. it's not always she can make it. Yeah, I, I was trying. Just let me just explain one thing to you. You want to speak? That's fine. Yes. 
Nobody needs to respond, Mr. Gatrochi or anybody does not need, you don't need to have a conversation. Louis spoke, he went and sat down. You have the floor, you can continue to speak as long as you want, but this dialogue back and forth, I'm not going to put up with it. Okay. So you can say what you want to say, I just apologize to them people who left this meeting that are spending $15 million in this town, that is embarrassed that they walked out. So now you can continue and embarrass everybody. Okay. You got it. So, I mean, the reality is you called embarrassment. It was Mr. Quattrochi who came up here. He felt that he needed to go to public participation and share that. I never saw Mr. Quattrochi, nor have I ever saw anybody come to the public participation and stick up for anybody else, right? There are days, there are times in council, Ralph, has been a bully. Ralph has been obnoxious. Ralph has said things that were, you know, not right. Mr. Quattrochi himself has cursed. <laughs> Mr. Peza has, you know, he called me a goofball. Uh, Lorraine has said, but what I'm saying is this, is that I'm not looking for somebody to come up and defend me. I'm not looking for it. All I'm saying is all part of what it is. But when you get your feelings hurt, Right? And you're a council person, you get your feeling it's part of the job. It's part of the job. And the thing about it is it doesn't change the fact that everything starts with our council president. And our council president has been there so long. And I'm not saying there's things that he hasn't done that have been good. I'm not going to say that because I'm not going to I'm not going to lie to myself. There are things that he has done as council president that have been great for the town. I'm not denying it. But what I'm saying is anytime that you're in power for so long, it corrupts you. That's why we have, you know, our own president can only seat for for four years and then have a second term. That's it. Because the longer people are in power, the longer people have control of things, then democracy is kind of lost. And they're the things that I'm trying to get out to everybody. And Mr. Quattrochi, I know that you see him as your friend and you guys do business together. You see all the great things. Listen, there have been many negative things, right? When Mr. When Mr. D. Giuseppe, when I was running the first time, Mr. D. Giuseppe, any black or Puerto Rican votes that that came out, registrations over there on the Beaver Street apartments, he went over there and put pressure on me. He hired a private investigator to come over there and put pressure on that they weren't really living there. So he put a lot of people in bad positions that may have not been living according to, you know, the, their, 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 their lease, maybe it was only a one-room apartment, and they had two people there, or three people there, for whatever position. So they got private investigators handing them cards, telling them that they want to know who is the one who registered them. And, and I know this is a rhetorical question, because nobody's going to answer it, Ralph, but do you have a problem with that, Mr. Quattrochi? Do you have a problem with somebody using their authority Money that I'm sure you know didn't come out of his pocket, but probably the committee that that runs their campaign is probably who paid for it, right? So you have that. Are you okay with that? Okay, the answer is probably no, but you'll never say anything because he's your friend. The difference between you and I, Mr. Petrochi, is that even when my friends do things that aren't right, I tell them about it. I do not ignore it, and you are in the sense of. You're not in a position to see it. You only see him as your friend and you love him. And I don't have a problem with that. The problem is you won't stick up for what's right because it affects your friend. And period, that's the end of the story. And just so in ending, I want to tell everybody to make it clear. The reason I even brought up that Mr. D. Giuseppe didn't graduate high school is because he pissed me off that he would make somebody a resident who I know is a fair man, a fair man, make him feel stupid, and and he didn't even graduate high school to for him to be such an elitist to think that he could talk down to normal, regular people that work their butts off all their lives because he's sitting in that chair. That's what I don't agree with, and that's what I don't accept. Period. Thank you. Now everybody up. Right. Clap. Right. I see you, young lady. All right. Again, I apologize. 
right. Dean, Gene, you want to go up? You want to? You want to just take a take a break? Let me see what else we got. Let's do, Mr. Burton. Uh, let's do. Uh, who's here from the fire police? Fire Mark? police. Come, come on up, Mark. Mark, come on up. Tonight we're giving Mr. Burton and the fire police um, a check to help them with offset costs for all the hard work they do. Um, today in the West 3, there were two fires. Wherever there's a fire, there's a parade. Anything that's going on, we have our fire police out there all the time. And your wife, who everybody knows, she's no joke. Like, she makes sure that everything comes to a standstill. People don't get around her. And it's hard. It's hard for what they do. It's not like they're getting paid. They could go in the middle of the night. They can go early in the morning. And we're lucky. We have this still in Bristol Borough. So on behalf of Bristol Borough, we'd like to give you this small donation to help you offset any costs that you have. Thank you. Who's here for the subdivision this evening? Good evening. My name is Paul Yaskowski. I am a surveyor with Erweiler and Walter Engineers and Surveyors. I'm here representing Kristen Wagner, who owns a piece of property on the northwest corner of Farragut and Cleveland Street. It's a vacant piece of property. It's approximately four-tenths of an acre big. It is in the R1A zoning district, which allows single-family homes, twin homes, and single-family attached homes. Uh, Mr. Wagner has uh, uh, proposed three single-family detached lots, homes with detached lots, um, in an area that allows the minimum lot size to be 4,500 square feet. The three lots that are proposed are uh, the smallest one is just a little bit bigger than 5,200 square feet, and the largest one is a little bit larger than 6,500 square feet. All the lots will contain a three-bedroom home, single-family detached, have a two-car on-lot parking spot. Uh, we have been reviewed by the, town, the borough engineer. We've been reviewed by the planning commission and we have been recommended as a preliminary final approval by the Planning Commission uh, as a condition uh, based on the uh, Township the Borough Engineer's Review Letter. Uh, we have received a copy of the resolution provided us by the solicitor. We are in agreement with the terms of that resolution, uh, and we are here tonight for a conditional final approval. Anybody have any questions uh, about this subdivision? So everybody knows it's on the old... Uh, Charlie Cops Cars property, correct? Yes. Uh, the construct. I have a question. It's not. It's not about land development, and I've read all the stuff and I support it. Um, I just. I still can't open Mr. Dillon's attachments. Um, I just wanted to get, a, out of curiosity, a general idea of what they're going to look like. Just, just out of curiosity. Um, same story. Uh, a lot of architectural A-frames in the front. Not like it's not going to be like a standard box ranch or house. A little bit of. Something extra to it, maybe a little porch on the front, uh, a little deck off to the backyard. It's going to be pretty nice. Siding? Yeah, yeah, it'll be vinyl siding. Yeah. Is it kind of similar to what we've seen on Wood Street, if you know, across from? Yes, the, yeah, yeah, Ralph, yeah, yeah, similar to that. I'm just curious. Thank the only thing I like to say is I'm glad you're coming into town. I'm glad you're investing in the borough. And Thank you, I appreciate whatever it. Whatever variances or anything you guys need, I understand mm -hmm. that. We just want to see properties put there, and I think it'll be a nice touch for Hammerman. So, again, thank thanks for uh, thanks for investing in Bristol. Yeah, absolutely. All right, so that we're going to try to vote on that this evening. <coughs> thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> you can show us the board, though. I mean, if you want to. You can show me. This is the location of the lots. The shaded areas that you see there are the houses. This is upside down. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
Maryland Avenue is at the bottom of the plan. Cleveland Street goes up the plan. The three lots are located here. Two of the driveways will be on Cleveland. Okay. One of the driveways will be on Farragut. Yeah. Perfect. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks. Bill, do you want to speak or you want to wait too? I could go through some public participation, whatever you guys want. Yeah. Anybody on this side of the room would like to speak on anything, go to the podium and state your name. Zaki and the Canal Works in Bristol. Uh, I'm here to ask the town if there's any way we can work something out with the parking at the rink next to the Canal Works. I just want to tell you that we, we did a survey the other day. We created 321 brand new jobs, 410 jobs total, but four, 321 of them jobs were new jobs that didn't exist bef before this time. There's no doubt that we need some parking over there. Now, the thing about that building, I just want to give you a little history about it. Originally, the mood was when the carpet mill was going on 30 years ago, when the Grundy Foundation wanted to do something there, it was these housings where we had historic landmarks for living coming to town. And we're going to do the carpet mill and the housing. Well, that's when I started to buy that for housing. And then all of a sudden, housing wasn't the deal. Nobody wanted no more apartments in town, and no matter how nice they were. So I sat there, and I had been spending 15 years restoring that building. Now, I know that that building is one of the top five buildings in Bucks County, not Bristol Borough. Yeah. It's, you know, whenever it was needed for anything, when it was needed for, for something from the Grundy Foundation, we've had three affairs there for free. We didn't get one dime. I sent text to Pete, few, few of the council members who had their cell phone pictures of people my lot filled on a Friday night from the rink. Um, I, I'm asking for a cross parking um, where you could park in my lot and I could park in your lot in the daytime. You know, there's a book here. It's called Save Our Town, Save You know, Save Our Land, Save Our Town. The guy won, guy won a major award for this. And basically what he says is, you, uh, our town was built a long time ago. They didn't have cars. <coughs> Who would have thought that the husband and wife both would have cars? And not only that, the husband and wife, their kids would all have cars. So we have a town with no parking, and that's what this book's about. Basically about how church lots, lots like that, have to accommodate this kind of stuff. We have to figure a way to do it. Now. I know that they allow the Grundy building to park on the tennis courts. I don't understand. That lot is totally empty all day long. Our people are all out of there. We have reverse hours. We run 8 to 5. And then the Grundy rank runs at night. And the other thing about it, listen, when you're in my lot and, and at the end of that big games they have, it's, it's, it's tailgating. It's a mess. There's bonfires, there's everything. There's beer cans all over. People walking out of a business don't walk walk out of there. And, and you know, they just get in their car and they go home. You know, we're losing companies that are going to move out. We're, we're on a roll here. And I've seen these rolls. I know we're, we're all proud of what happened, you know, with Bristol being picked for that town. But And I told this to Bill. I said, it's a fine line. I've been there a lot of time. It's like that roller coaster. You know, we're at that hill. We think we're going to coast down. You know, it, you know, it, 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 we can't allow it to slip back. You know, it, it just. I, I was. I have one company came from Princeton. They're a pharmaceutical company. I just text. I just asked Robert from the King George. How much is that company? He's only been here one year. Spend with you. He told me they spent between twenty and thirty thousand so far in catering that he did at that building. The one company came from one. This is a three-year-old story, but when I first put them in there, they came from Route One on by Sesame Place. They're an energy, uh, 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 energy company, so they come to the building and one day I'm going to King George. They hey, hey Bernard, how you doing? I look over, they're all having a party. There was thirty guys in there sitting at the King George. It was Christmas time. 
So I they asked me to sit down. So I sit down. I says, I want to ask everybody here, who's been in the King George before? Not one person raised their hand. Who ever been in Bristol till you moved here? Not one person raised their hand. You know, we hear about the Super Bowls that or the, or the draft. It was worth fifty million dollars to Philly. The canal work is what's going to turn Bristol around. Trust me. Three hundred new people we brought to this town. You know, to turn them away and not accommodate them. You know, it, it's 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 not right. Bernard, what's your what's the current situation? If someone comes to Canal Works for work, where do they and they're out of parking spots? Where do they park? Or where what do you tell your <coughs> new uh, you know your new? You don't. They can PCs. see that there's no parking places. Maybe they don't come here. That's what they're doing. <coughs> but I'm saying, as it is right now, when you have overflow, what what do you do? What what happens? You don't right now. Okay. But companies companies are going to leave. They're, they're getting frustrated. And you have vacant space that you're saying that. Yeah. Huh? Let me just throw this out there. If you wanted us to work with you at Novacare, the council voted unanimous to help you. Correct? Correct. Created whatever you needed. I don't think anybody's here not to try to help you in any way. First of all, the authority makes the decision on the parking. I don't have any problem sitting down with a couple members of the authority, yourself and a couple members of council, to see if there's something that can be worked out. But the only thing you got to understand is that that rink, if we ever sell that facility, we can't sell a building that has no parking because we'd be doing the same thing you're doing. I understand right that. So That's a, can something be worked out? Absolutely. I mean, I don't have any problems with, with that. I understand that that has come up before that if we sell it, naturally, that deal can't, co can't go with the rink. The last, words, I lose the last it that tenant that we negotiated <coughs> with that you had, and I wasn't part of that negotiations, wanted a long-term lease. <coughs> and I think we'd be doing a disservice to the taxpayers by signing a long-term lease because and you just admitted it. It wouldn't be right if the <coughs> rink ever got sold. So I know what you do. We have no problem trying to work with you on something. In the next few weeks, I'll tell Jim to get it. Have it they haven't. When does the authority meet? Uh, usually the fourth Thursday. Well, the authority meets the fourth Thursday of the month. Is it a public lot, though? Uh, uh, let's let's get a couple authority members. We'll meet and we'll see when we get this resolved. I, mean, I don't know. What, I mean, we can't vote on it. No, I, I don't expect. I, I want this is. I'm here to see if we could just start some communications towards. And I just said that. Okay, I asked Lou. I asked Lou to walk through that building one day, and I think Lou, you had to be pretty impressed. What kind of, what kind of tenants are in this place? I mean, you know, when I hired that form, when I brought that pharmaceutical guy in and spent that money, I said to him, well, "What kind of jobs are they?" And he says, there's, there's, there's 10 people that make over $200,000 a year there. Now, is everybody from Bristol there? No, but there's a lot of them from Bristol there that work in that building. And, and the thing that you have to remember, you, you know, I, I can't walk into Caesars without seeing people from that building. I, I see flowers from Finks coming in there. You know, it's, it's, it's not, it, it, that's the kind of thing that will turn these towns around. You know, we gave millions of dollars to, 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 to do dial. But we didn't have no money. We didn't get anything. We did it ourselves, and we're almost there. But we didn't give any money. The council no. didn't give any money to dial. No, 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 no. I'm not saying you did, but I'm saying the government did. And you know that that's the old that whether it's government gave it the federal or anything. It's it's money that got given. It's tax dollars. We never received any of that. Well, I think the redevelopment authority helped you out with elevators and all, didn't they? No. No, no. We had one. We had one loan that we got a. That's back that's, then. That's I Bob White's always getting, been there for us. I think we're know. getting off base. Yeah, let's stick I to know the you want to Bob talk White's about always been there for us. I don't. You know. Uh, you the problem. The, let me just say about that with that with Bob. It's it's Bob's always <laughs> been there, but he's he's. It's easier to help the tenant than it is the owner of the right. building. Do you so follow what I'm saying? You're here for parking. <laughs> They meet the fourth Thursday of the month. Jim will talk to them, and we'll be in touch with you for a meeting. All right. Thank I got you. a question, Mr. Devine. Yeah. Uh, how many spots do you think that you need? 
what's the number? And how many, Mr. Dolan, how many spots do we have over there at the rink? Do we know that offhand? I have 145 spots. <coughs> okay. Now, there is, I'm, not, I'm just saying this just so you realize. The, the building lays, laid out when it was done for 70 apartments or condos. Okay. 140 spots is pretty good. You know, we always had enough for that. I'm sorry that all of a sudden, the, 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 you know, things change. No, that wasn't the question. I, I, I don't know. I, I, it's completely empty. You know, and if it becomes a problem, there's other things we could do. We thought about a shuttle. You know, who knows? We might put a, we might put a, a second-story parking lot over there. You know, it'd be a shame to block the building. Hey, listen, I'm sorry. Are rolling. I was just gonna say, I think this is a good step. We're talking, right. so let's let's keep that going, and we'll we'll take it from there. Okay. Mr. Thank you. I'll contact you. All right. Anybody else on this side of the room want to speak on anything at this time? Mr. Bexler. Good evening, Ken Bexler, 300 Park of Cleveland Street. Just following up on last month with the uh, permanent waivers, what's the word mm -hmm. on that? We'll be doing uh, paint up, fix up for a month of May. I have it on my thing to announce it. I talked to Mr. Gerard before the meeting. I called Mr. Buckhofer on a cell phone and got authorization around 10 after 7 this evening. They never got back to me. And he said BIU is willing to work with the borough for small projects like we have done in the past. Okay, good to know. Thanks. You're welcome. <coughs> Anybody else on this side of the room? <coughs> Good evening, everyone. Tim Sorum, 254 Madison. Three things, and I'll make it really quick. Ralph, I had uh, texted you last week. I'm part of a car club. It's a lot of modern cars. What we were asking is if we can get a pass for First Fridays. We want to try. We have a, our car club ranges everywhere from Westchester, South Jersey, Central Jersey. It's a lot of, um, a lot of the newer muscle cars, Challenger Chargers, and all we are friends with Mustang groups. What we want to do is ask for 20, 25 spots. If you were coming off left off of um, Old 13, Pull in the parking lot right where Wood is, but against the trail, Wood Street, but against the trail. What we're going to do is call it Hoods Up for Hunger. But we want to do it. Any guy to, anybody wants to participate from one of our groups, and it's already regulated. We already had a discussion with everyone if it's allowed, if you guys are okay with it. Um, there'd be no music playing. There's no revving engines. All cars would be off. There's no music, no burnouts. Anyone, everyone understands that we've never had a problem any of the events that we do. We do a lot of back to blue events. Um, the uh, Corrections officer that was killed in Delaware. We raised a lot of money from here. We all drove down there to raise a lot of money for him. We're very tight in our group. We're very friend, all friends. Uh, so what we want to do is we want to raise money for the Borough Food Bank on Wood. So we're calling it Hoods Up for Hunger. Um, everybody understands we're asking for 2025 and it could get bigger. We just want to bring, so it's twofold, right? It's raise money for the, the, for the food bank and it bring more people in, diverse. We have everybody from every ethnic group, uh, men, women that take pride in their vehicles, put a lot of money in their cars, and they're all more than happy to give $10 handed in just to park there to open their hood up just for good family-friendly conversation. And it will bring a lot to the restaurants everywhere we go. We flood the restaurants with uh, buying food, uh, any streets or any kind of fairs that we do. So I think it would be a good uh, opportunity. And this Friday might be pushing a little bit to get that many people there. But we just want to ask if we can have that one section that uh, maybe we have about 20, 25 spots. So we could try and raise once a month, 200 $250. I donate to the food bank down there. I've walked in with bags of food, and at times it's been empty. Well, so the reason I didn't get back to you because I needed to get together with Merle, right, and with the people that run First Friday. So sure. We don't want any conflicts, but yep. Merle, why don't we try to meet? I mean, it's not going to happen this week, so maybe for June. Absolutely. Let's see if we could talk to whoever's running yep. First Friday, and we'll see if we could work this out. We just we were just at the tech school, and uh, I have a ramp pick up. And we were able to fill the bottom portion of my bed with food. Just from people from our group alone, we had probably about 25, 30 cars there. Everybody was just dumping non-perishable food in the back of my truck. Why don't you give Merle your number? I will. I'll talk. All I'll right. catch up with them. We'll see if we can get Oh, who's Merle? Merle's right here. Oh, then, okay. I'll catch up. I have to leave in a little bit. Thank you. All right. Can we can get so, it out. so the second, second part is, um, I know, I, I'm on Madison Street. I love Madison. 200 blocks. I, I, for me, it's the most beautiful block in the borough. I grew up on the street in Philly. It's very similar. It feels like home to me. 
a lot of people we've talked on the street, some of us, a lot of people don't have money to get the trees trimmed. I know this is an issue. I know it's a non-borrow responsibility. Greg, Greg, you guys are right there. We have probably on a nice, beautiful day, even during the winter time, if it's still nice out, we can have 15, 20 kids just playing on the block. Those trees are so dangerous. We have branches probably 20, 25, 30 feet long. Some of them are good, some of them are good 12, 13 inches around dropping at any given time. Uh, my, my wife's Jeep was just, a uh, branch hit hers. I want to see if there's something we can come in agreement with, something we can figure out, just to try and get some of that dead tree out of there. A lot of the people on our block, we take pride in our homes. We try and one-up each other, come down our block. We always try just to make our house a little more beautiful. We take a lot of pride in our street. We want to see if we can get some kind of help and assistance from the borough to try and get some of those dead branches kind of out. Now, our side of the block, when I first moved in, maybe about 10, 11 years ago, a lot of us put our money together, but we struggled and we had to save up to do it. Um, maybe we could have Pico look at it because maybe it's the wires are being what we could. So you know, Pico, we could look into right. that. So our next door neighbor at 256 just had the tree cut down the back. About a year ago, I had Pico come out because the line, the conjunction line goes in the back of the house. It sits over my yard. Right. Branches were laying on it. I asked him to look at the front, and Pico said, we're clear. We have nothing here that we need okay. to look at. So there's no Pico infrastructure there, is what you're saying? Yeah, all Pico lines are run behind the house. <laughs> They're all in the backyard, correct. Okay. <laughs> They're all in the backyard. Pico right. told me it's so more Verizon about, lines and Comcast. Cable and, uh, is there cable? In the Verizon front? and Comcast lines out there? Yeah, good luck. So maybe we'll, we'll, we'll have to... <laughs> yeah. You know, right. Check into that. Yeah, whatever we can do. I mean, it's like I said, it's it's but it's a shame because there's so many kids out there, and we're afraid. A lot of the neighbors were talking. We're afraid one of those branches are going to come down. Uh, school time when it's a storm coming by. Kids walking home from school. I stand out there, and I just something. If I'm home working from home, I'll watch just to make sure that the kids are safe coming home. I worry about it because you can hear the crack and you can hear the thump, Mr. and it's Jones, scary. When I, when I drive down the street, I think of it every time because yeah. I know what you're saying. Yeah, and, and any given, like I said, any given time, there's 15, 20, and I love the sound of kids out there playing, but a lot of parents have talked about worrying, about worrying about it, and we, everybody doesn't have five, six hundred dollars, seven hundred dollars. I don't have a tree in front of my house. I put five hundred dollars out last time we got the trees trimmed down because I don't want to fall into my car, I don't want to hit my house. Most important, I don't want to hit any kids. Mr. Or any Jones, does, walking does Comcast do something similar to what Pico has done in no. the past? The only thing Pico does, they wait for, <laughs> and we're all tired, they wait for the tree to fall. Or if it's sitting on it. If it's sitting on the wire, they'll take it down too. Every so many yep. years they come in town yeah, they and they ruin the trees by putting But do the trees. utilities have any, any legal responsibilities? Yeah, it's cheaper for them to come out and put the line back Here. up once it falls. It's something we could discuss, but I could tell you right now, once we start, we need to have a program that's going to address the entire town. Whatever I can do to help, I mean, right. I'll be I more just than happy. I'm not going to sit here and lie and say we're going to cut your trees tomorrow. Yeah. But I could tell you it's an issue everywhere. Sure. So it's something that, yeah. you know, maybe this council It's a shame, too, because it's a lot of the dirty sick and more. aside so much money a year to start yeah. seeing what we can do. Yeah. All right. So um, just to keep moving on, uh, part three is... Madison Street's a speedway. It's horrible. It is bad. I stay at the corner. I walk my dogs in the morning. There's certain people running for council right now that I've witnessed roll through stop signs, no turn signals roll. That's bad enough. But people, we've got some kid in a, in a silver pickup. I think it's a pickup. Everybody's complaining about just blowing down Wilson. I mean, this kid's doing 50, 60, just running stop signs. I don't know if he's playing chicken, if he's got a death wish, if he wants to kill someone, but it's bad. Uh, during the morning, I see people, Trenton Road, I walk my dogs back there, I see kids walking to school, I see cars doing about 40, 50 miles an hour back down there just to get out. I see people disregarding a lot of the safety officers crossing kids around the street. It's bad. Now let me get back to the speeding again. I, good friend of mine, father passed away, he, said, he was sitting in my house at 1 o'clock, we were sitting there Friday night, he came over, he just wanted to talk. Beautiful night, kept it low, we were out there talking. I had a couple drunk people walking up, coming from Finney's, we saw them come all the way down. It's not their responsibility, but the guy wanted to, like, just wanted to start walking up on my porch. I told him to step away, and he wanted to come back up. I see this guy repeatedly. My truck's been hit. My brand-new truck's been hit twice on that street already. Other people have had their cars hit. Madison Street is an absolute speedway, especially people coming out of the bar, because they do not want to go down Radcliffe and Pond. They like to use Wilson or Trenton to blow all the way through and back out again. Uh, you can ask a lot of people on Will uh, Madison, especially Wilson, that corner. 
just because the way the street goes. It's the way it rolls right through. They can come right out of the bar, they can shoot right across. We have people walking down the street from Finney's, and I, and I, don't, I don't have any problem with people going to the bar or doing what they want to do, but what do I do if I see somebody coming down the street trying to get into their car drunk? <laughs> well, I know, I understand that, but they're gone before I can even get out there. Quite frankly, I'm not up at 1, 2 o'clock quite often at all in the morning trying to do it, but it's bad. I ask the police sometimes, um, I know Chuck's on a, a Facebook page of Barrow Neighbors Helping Neighbors. I've made suggestions, maybe once in a great while, we have somebody sit, police officers, and I, I know we don't have the staff to do it, but every once in a great while, sit on a corner. If we have it unmarked and we can get somebody to help out, I guarantee you, once the word starts getting out that the police are starting to ticket people and start to move them, it'll start to slow down. Look at Route 13. It's all over Facebook. People are warning everyone, don't speed. They had 90 tickets they handed out on Friday for speeders. It's Once the word starts getting out, people start heeding the caution when it comes to that. I don't want to see any kids getting killed. I don't, especially in the morning going to school. I don't want to see anybody getting hurt walking out. I sure enough, don't want to see my truck get hit anymore. I think the mayor and the chief will definitely yeah. discuss this tonight. I mean, stand there playing clothes in the morning. Just walk, stand on one of the corners. I'm going to make a comment only because we go through this over and over yeah. again. The council has supported us. But I want you to understand that you live in the state of Pennsylvania. Yeah. The state of Pennsylvania does not allow municipal police to run radar. The only people that can run radar in the state of Pennsylvania are the Pennsylvania state. state Police. So traffic enforcement for a municipal police officer anywhere in the state of Pennsylvania right. is an extremely difficult task. We get these complaints nonstop. We live in a small borough with 10,000 people with a lot of vehicular traffic, and it's sure. a walking district school. We feel your pain and we honor your concerns. <clears throat> We cannot put the two or three police officers we have on the road. Yes, it's it's a running and resource uh, driven type of response. Sure. We'll and be there, and I'll try to make it is just like I've done. Uh, every council person here, as a one time or not, <coughs> or multiple times or not, called me about. Yeah, I see. Look at you, Lorraine. Well, you're the best we can. Well, what I like you to do is, as both of you are, you're very passionate about this, and you have a car club, and you have those things is we need a group of uh, a grassroots effort to push this radar issue. Because I can guarantee you, as everybody in this knows, room knows, I'm from New Jersey. The Sorry. police department that I, I know, we all have our faults. Yeah. The police department that <laughs> we had front rear moving radar. So that resource is incredible and we can do so much Enforcement, education, and take care of these problems. So I need you to go to your. I know these people have put. I think there's a bill right now. I think I believe there is a bill that's every getting, year to die. I, yeah. every year. We have so, to find a way to attach it to something else that means a lot. That's the way you get everything passed through Congress. Oh. And Senate yeah. is to attach like said, it. Really, it's to attach it into something that you know is going to get passed, and then have both sides push on it. So uh, I wasn't referring so much to the speeding as the people rolling through, no turn signal stopping. That's easy to. I mean, you can. It's, it's, it's not it's that easy to pull over. We, we're, we're familiar with it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just, just, just one thing before you're done. <coughs> with the, like the silver truck, maybe if you stick here until after the meeting. I have to, I, I, I have to pick my wife okay. up a little bit. I'll so that's get, why your, I'll get your number off them, Merle. But okay. if we can zone in on a particular time, I know you said probably in the morning, but you know. If there was a big post that was on the Bristol Borough Neighbors Helping Neighbor that everybody was, you know, the best thing to probably do, and I'll be honest with you, I haven't personally seen it, but I've heard, I heard two neighbors talking about it already, and I've seen so many comments on there. The best thing to do is ask the people what time, if we can start pinning that down. Absolutely. You know, That's and then, key. And maybe the guy sees it. Maybe the guy sees it on there, and he knows he's going to be watched. He knows he's going to see it. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's what we need to do is get that, but. That's where I was going. Before you leave. Thank you. For the record. Brittany didn't get your name and address. You're going so fast. Yep. She's I'll give you a minute. Sorry, that's just a Sam. U E R M A N N 254 Madison. All right, the last thing before you leave. Lorraine, me, and Betty are running for, we're not going for stops. I am correct? definitely not going for stops. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, it's not. I, it's not us. That's I'll not lie you guys, no. <laughs> All right, thanks. I can, and guess what? I'm, I'm not going to toss out names, no, that's but fine. it's... Uh -huh. I can 
I've but as Chief said, it's somebody that you know the Bristol Roll, and the guy's probably been here for 150 years, so it's that's and fine. it's not the mayor, right? Because everybody thinks I've been here 150 years. <laughs> well, quite frankly, we have quite a few mayors, and you can, if you go out two o'clock in the morning, you can see them all over the borough. <laughs> um, right, I drive so slow, my husband doesn't want to get in the car with me. I think you're in reverse most right. of the time. Yeah, I'm serious. <laughs> Thanks for coming in. Thank you. Right, thanks, guys. Um, so let me know about the car thing, and we'll try and get it going for June. Give okay. her all your number. All right. Anybody else on this side of the room? Anybody? Gene, I know you're there. Anybody on this side of the room? <laughs> Public comments. Bill Pez of Pond Street. I forgot what I was going to say. Got to say no it. way. No um, way. <laughs> I uh, want to give you a report on what Raising the Bar has been doing and, and, and some things that I hope the public will take advantage of. Uh, first of all, some good news. The solicitor and the manager brought to my attention that, uh, raised, uh, that Bristol Borough was featured in the Pennsylvania Boroughs Association monthly journal, a weekly journal? Monthly. Monthly journal. Uh, that publication went throughout the state indicating that we won the small business revolution. That's just another one of so many uh, opportunities for us to spread the word about Bristol Borough. I have a, uh, a text message in my pocket from a person who was referred to us by a resident of Bristol. I should be a realtor. I'm going to quit my job and be a realtor because uh, uh, <coughs> I get these inquiries all the time about people who want to move to Bristol. And, and it's just a good thing and we need to roll with it. I want to agree with, with Mr. Mazzocchi <coughs> about parking for... First of all, uh, Lou and I have been talking about this for 20 years. We need to get a handle on parking. I think we should explore the idea of having a parking authority, uh, or at least explore it, to see how we can utilize some of these. You know, we're, we're concerned. Many of the churches in town are not what they used to be. They have lots. There, there's ways of, of utilizing cross parking uh, in a way that benefits the borough and doesn't necessarily hurt anyone else. We should explore that. I think it's important. I think Mr. Gatrochi been wanting to do that. <coughs> we're just trying. To, yeah. yeah. There's a lot of things on the table. Yep. Uh, I want to agree with something else Bernard said, and that is that there's a fine line. There's a fine line between our town moving forward and not. We don't have time for nonsense. We don't have time. We have to build on the positive. We have to build on the energy we have. I know where your hearts are. You didn't put your name on a ballot to come up here and, and, and just deal with nonsense. Your heart is to do something good for this town. And we are on the crest of the most optimistic time that I can remember as long as I've been involved. We need to build on that. We need to all get together and build on that. So with that, I want to invite the people of the town to do some things. First, a <coughs> deluxe uh, corporation, uh, you know, part of that $500,000 thing is that they're making an eight-part video series of Bristol Barrow. And it's going to be shown, it's going to be released nationally. It's going to be on, online, and it's going to be on the Hulu network, okay? Two of the biggest events that they're going to be part of that, that's going to be part of that film, are going to take place on June 10th and 11th. On June 10th, they're going to do the big photo shoot that they tried to do, and it snowed uh, a few days after we won the contest. So they're going to do it again. They're going to come in with a drone, and I'm inviting, we're inviting everyone in town, all the people that worked so hard to win this contest, you should be in this video. You owe it to yourself to be in this video. So come to the 100, we're going to ask you to close the 100 block of Mill Street that day on June 10th, and uh, just be there and be happy and, and get in the photo shoot. They're going to drone in, it's going to be cool, and Robert Hershevec's going to be there again, and Amanda Brinkley, and it's going to be fun. Then the next day, on Sunday, June 11th, after the Flag Day ceremony, which will be at noon, uh, on, on Sunday, June 11th, at the wharf, uh, about 5 o'clock or so, is the goodbye ceremony. If you watch the last episode of, of the uh, video, when Wabash won, uh, there's a ceremony where they give us our prizes, they give us our gifts, we say thank you to them, they say thank you to us. It's a big happy event. The restaurants are going to be open. I talked to Annabella's and, and the cantina and, and the King George. They're going to do some things on the street. I'm going to turn it into a little festival. So the people of this town earned it. Take part in it. Don't be shy. Don't say, well, it's for somebody else to be in it. Get in there and get your mug. Get your mug on television, okay? Also, then on Monday, uh, uh, June 12th, 
Yeah. On Monday, June 12th, one of the things that the, the contest award gives us is a, a business <coughs> seminar. So from 9 to 12 at the Bristol Riverside Theater, I'm pretty sure it's on Monday, uh, they're going to have five different business seminars, half 30-minute seminars. Hershevec himself is going to do one of them, which is going to be fun. It's going to be free, open to the public, and you can, I guess we'll, we'll figure out with the, with the theater how they're going to work tickets, how you get a seat. But if you're a business owner or an aspiring business owner, you get to hear five or six experts speak for 30 minutes each on every aspect of business development. It's a wonderful opportunity. It's an opportunity that will cost you a few hundred bucks at least if you try to do it somewhere else. Now, the other thing <coughs> that, that we get as a result of winning this contest is uh, we, they're going to do things for our business district. And uh, they've asked us what we should do, and they've told us what they think they should do. So here's what they're going to do. You know, the banner that we hang over the street that says, you know, the next play that's coming, or that says it's historic Bristol Day or the Italian Festival or whatever. That banner used to be affixed to the buildings on either side of the street, and it pulled away from the brick, and it's just no longer a viable option. So one of the things that they want to do for us is install some decorative poles, one on either side of the street, so we can hang that banner. And what we're trying to do is to get them to do two, okay? Because we know, uh, as someone who represents a group that has to hang these banners, that, that wants banner time, we're all competing for banner time because the play's <coughs> going up and historic Christmas Day and something else. So we're thinking about having two on the street and spread them out enough so we can, uh, we can piggyback and, and advertise uh, two things at once. So that's one thing. The other thing is, uh, you know, we know we bring a lot of people to the riverfront. The challenge is we want to grow business. The challenge is to get visitors who come to town for the riverfront to get them up onto the street, get up on into the street, into the restaurants, into the shops, seeing things, uh, enjoying that. So uh, we're talking about putting in a kiosk somewhere, not too big, something you would see at the mall. When you go to the mall, you want to figure out what stores where, what floors it on, or whatever. Something like that, that would be interchangeable. So <coughs> if a new business came, you could slide the old card out, slide the new card in, a couple directional arrows and things like that. So that's one of the things they're working on. We have to work with the borough. Um, the, the next thing is, and we learned this when we had the, uh, when we had the, uh, after we won the small business revolution, and we, we decided to have a party. The borough had a party, raising the bar, and the borough got together and had a party. Uh, you know, uh, it, we gave away free hot dogs for the kids. We gave them free popcorn. We gave them uh, pastry, and people donated things. We had a DJ. It was a great night. It was one of the happiest nights I can remember in Bristol. And it was free. And it was done for everyone, okay? Uh, the sound system is not good down there, as we know. <coughs> so Deluxe has agreed to put in at least the first phase of a sound system. It would be a four-phase sound system. There would be a sound system uh, in that area. And the other time we see that the sound system is not great is when we try to do the tree lighting. Tree lighting is one of the best events in, in towns, one of the best, it is the best tree lighting ceremony in the county, and <coughs> you can't hear as well as you should. So we're talking about putting in a four-part system. One would be right around where that tree is. We we're talking about affixing it to buildings, the, the, the uh, amplifiers. Uh, another one at the gazebo, another one at the wharf, projecting towards Mill Street and towards the new pier that's going to go in because there's going to be, it's going to be conducive to things and another one uh, where the, where the uh, monuments are. So that's going to cost some money, and they're willing to do at least phase one, maybe phase one and two of that. The last thing and the largest thing is uh, they would like to build a small pavilion. I have Michael Gorman with me who's really been on the phone with them and negotiating uh, the size and shape and whatnot. But we want to put in a pavilion. Right now we're talking 10 by 20 feet, Michael. <coughs> 10 by 20 feet. And we want to put it at Mill Street Crossing and uh, position, it, position it in such a way that it enhances the corner. And what we thought we would do is it would be a nice spot for use on First Fridays. One of the primary vendors could use it. It could be a music venue on First Fridays. We could use it on historic Bristol Day as a little semi-headquarters. Uh, we could put a guitar player down there on a Friday night, whatever. Uh, so that's something that we need permission from the borough to do. And uh, I'm not sure what form that takes, you know, there's a pumpkin contest. They used to use that spot for a pumpkin decorating contest. This would make it better. Maybe we put a produce vendor down there once in a while. These are all things that people, when you stop on the street and talk about, that's one of the things they think would be a nice thing. Um, I don't know how you want to handle that in terms of moving forward with permission. 
It's no cost to the borough. They pay for everything. Where exactly is the pavilion going to be? <coughs> on, on the Mill Street Crossing parcel. It is? Oh, right exactly. Okay. Yeah. We discussed it earlier. Yeah. We sat in and we did discuss it. We weren't sure if we wanted it there or somewhere else, but we think that's probably where we're going to start at. It was a really great idea. Um, I was really thrilled about meeting with them today, and we're looking forward to doing this. Good. Okay. Um, so those are the projects. What would you like me to do, or do you have questions? Uh, or I think in 2009, you know, we have recommended, I think the banners, and I always spoke to Michael about this, and I spoke to you about it. And I also spoke to uh, Deluxe when they were here with Robert and Amanda. That I think that we're fighting for banner space. And I think that we asked them at that point when I had the personal interview with them that I thought three sets of banners would, you know, you got four blocks so you would come in towards the beginning of the first and just, you know, as you're going down. And we wanted to do two on uh, Rackler Street near Lennox because a lot of them people that come out of Lennox go back to wherever. And they don't know there's a festival or something going on in town. So we, we, my goal was to push them to do five sets of banners, but the price is like eleven thousand dollars a set. Right. So I, I, I didn't think that would be possible. I would see what they're going to do, and maybe council wants to pick up a couple of them, just like the sound system. When I met with them, I recommended we do the sound system down at the park because I think with the docks and everything being done, a lot of people are just looking at it as for boats. There's a lot of people that are going to enjoy sitting out there. You're going to be 80 feet out into the river, you know, a couple benches, people fishing, and it'd be nice to have some music playing during the day, just mm -hmm. some low, you know, uh, <coughs> break up the atmosphere or whatever is going on. So I think. That is something that I think is a plus for Bristol when there's an event, you know, Celtic Day, Italian Day, Puerto Rican Day, you'll hear that music throughout the park. Right. So I think they're all pluses, and I think that whatever Deluxe wants to do, and I know it has to be done by June 10th, and I don't want to put council in under any pressure, I think we should then come and say, okay, this is what we need to complete these projects, because we never did anything since I've been here, that's, you know, not 100% doing it the right way. So if they're going to pay a certain amount to this, then I think we should pick up the difference and uh, and make all these projects happen. And, and I want to, yeah, and I want to clarify. They're going to do all the things I indicated <coughs> at, at, at full price. It's just that if you want more polls, so it's not like you're supplementing, you know, right. I want to make that clear. But if you want more polls, it'd be a good idea to have them. But are and they doing the entire sound system? No, I'm saying they'll do a sound system that right. will give we us that central location. <coughs> if, you want it, if you want it to spread <coughs> out the park for a minimal cost. Right, that's what uh, I'm saying. Then now's the time to do it. Now's yes. the time to do it. Well, we're going to have to get on that. Okay. Okay. And I hate to see us lose the opportunity that Deluxe is going to come <coughs> in and help us do what we wanted to do on that corner. I mean, it's a shame. I mean, I hope we can get this done before the time runs out, but I really would hate to see us not be able to jump on it and grab onto it. I think the plan we settled on can be done. As I say, they want it to be finished, and when they come here on June 10th and 11th, they can film it, and that becomes part of that last episode, which we'll all enjoy. Mm -hmm. you, know, you mentioned something about the docks. I walk down there every day. I'm a very impatient guy, uh, but they're moving along well. But you know what? Uh, we talk about boats. Most of the people sitting on those benches watching that work going on, they're fishermen. They can't wait to get out on that pier and cast that line out, you know, almost to the channel. And so they're, they're excited. It's something for, for everyone. And I don't think anybody really could comprehend the massive structure that is being built there. Nice. Everybody was saying the ice is going to, you know. I think now that they're seeing what is really out there, you understand why the price tag is on yeah. that. O overnight, we had a lot of engineers, right? <laughs> All of a sudden. <laughs> uh, a couple of quick announcements, and I'll be, I'll be finished. June 16th is the Canal Festival. And again, uh, in the past, the borough has, we're going to have a food truck uh, component to it on Prospect Street. And in the past, the borough has paid for it's a couple hundred bucks for the porta potty that makes it more convenient there. I mean, that, that's the most underutilized part of town. It's a beautiful park, beautiful lagoon. 
uh, we want to do it do more there but you know there's no bathroom there so if you guys would consider uh, a couple hundred dollars for a porta potty uh, that would be great uh, it's going to be free food and no, it's not going to be free food yeah. it's free, uh, free entertainment and you know and games and activities for the kids uh, the cleanup was last week uh, Jose Acevedo ran the cleanup. Michael Gorman ran the flower sale. It was very successful, and we appreciate everyone who participated. We're on a roll. Let's just keep it going. Let's spend our time serving the people the way we wanted to run for office to serve the people. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. Anybody else on this side of the room? I'll be very quick. My name is Liz Fisher. I live in 1102 Wood Street. And uh, I have to say, because of past experience, I will say that nobody on this council asked me to say anything, suggested I say anything, or even knew I was going to be here. And the reason I'm here is because last month's meeting, I heard some disturbing things budget related, having to do with transfer of funds and that kind of thing. Um, I knew budgets the first year I was reporting, I understood them. And I covered them for 30 years. And I will say that Bristol Barrow conducts this business as responsibly and honestly as every other municipality that I cover. And I've covered many. Thank you. Thank you. So anybody else in the public? That ends public participation. Jean, I know you <laughs> I never thought you'd be here. I apologize. <coughs> Mr. Council, uh, President, members of Council, uh, Gene Williams with the Grundy Foundation, uh, here representing the uh, Advis Advisory and Oversight Committee, AOC. Uh, we have three learning centers here in Bristol Borough, and it's um, summer camp time. We're really ex excited about the partnership we've had with Council, um, and we're, I think, the only municipality in all of Bucks County that uh, offers <coughs> free um, six-week camps uh, for kids first grade through grade 12. Um, it's, um, we've been doing it for, you know, a lot of years, and in the last couple years, it's really, really gained a lot of momentum, a lot of steam. Um, the uh, camp this year will begin uh, July 5th and end uh, August 10th, and uh, it's uh, with, with our learning center at St. Mark and uh, Snyder Girardi. Uh, we have um, uh, activities for academics and activities for physical education. And the new one up at the high school, uh, we have um, our garden club, and also uh, new this year uh, with the high school kids uh, is, uh, is a learn leadership camp. Um, so that's something new. And with the young kids, again, we'll be looking to send the young kids to Trenton Thunder and the Neshaminy State Park. Um, both uh, both the, the trips for the young kids and the uh, leadership camp for the uh, uh, older kids uh, are things that are not paid for by the 21st Century Grant. So the uh, Advisory and Oversight Committee is asking assistance once again from Council to help defray some of the costs to send the kids to camp. Uh, we have about 225 young kids slated to attend the Trenton Thunder and the Chamonix State Park trips. And right now we, we have 25 slated to attend the uh, Learning Center. Um, it's called Learn and Seed with the Community College and the uh, Chamber of Commerce over at the Community College. So worthwhile projects. It's really keeping with what we're trying to do, provide again, no cost, uh, six week educational experiences for our, for our youth. And what we're seeing is, you know, it's paying off. You know, we give the kids a lot of things to do. It's just not glorified babysitting. It's all education related. It's all tied to the curricula that, the, you know, it's mandated through the state. So it's really positive things. And I think the, the, uh, the parents appreciate it and, um, so again, we're just looking to build on momentum we've gained in the last couple of years. So um, with that, I'll end and ask any questions, please feel free to uh, fire away. Nobody has any questions. The only thing I want to say is I think when Council made this partnership with you guys, I think it was one of the best things we have done. So another year, we want to present you with a check for $10,000 right. for this year's program and just keep moving things forward because that's what we're all about. I just want to say too, I do appreciate it, Mr. President. Uh, this council has been great in supporting this this, this idea. Uh, your, your willingness to allow uh, the tax office to sell tickets for our fundraisers that support what we do has been very helpful. Um, Police Chief Henry, um, uh, 
Com Fire Commissioner uh, Slack, uh, uh, Emergency uh, Borough Manager uh, Winslow, Mr. Uh, Mr. Uh, Joe Saxon, our mayor, all have been supportive in what we're trying to do. It really does take everybody pulling together to make this thing work. So I'm very appreciative of all the, um, Mr. Dillon especially, yes. um, his help as well um, in, in getting this thing, uh, you know, partnership working. So I, I do appreciate all the many people who do help us working for our kids. So thank you. Thank you. Sorry for the delay. I think that's about it, right? Yes. All right. Patty, uh, I'll start with you. Okay. Well, yeah. um, go ahead. Herbie, you have anything? Yeah, just two things. One is the uh, the FEMA fire prevention grant is, is uh, now open. It will be open until May the 19th. We are going to apply for uh, carbon monoxide alarms with 10-year batteries, and uh, hopefully we'll, uh, we'll get funded for that this time. <coughs> the second thing I just want to mention that in the last six weeks, we've had three very serious fires in Bristol. Um, one was the result of a, a utility guy trying to run a new line next to the house service, <coughs> caused the short, started a fire in the wall, caused extensive damage. Um, and then in the last month, we had a serious fire on Corson Street where uh, the result was uh, it basically destroyed the kitchen and that the cause of that fire was um, careless cooking. Somebody had left oil on the stove to cook some french fries, forgot to turn the stove off, didn't remove the pot. And then today we had a very serious fire on Otter Street, um, which was an extremely difficult fire for the firefighters. One, it was a basement fire, which is extremely dangerous for firefighters. Two, there was a tremendous amount of materials being stored in that house, not only in the basement, but on the other floors, which made it extremely difficult for the firefighters to get in with their hose lines to extinguish the fire. And um, we wound up, we had three firefighters. One was um, transported to Lower Bucks, and he, he was released for heat exhaustion, and then two other ones that the rescue squad looked at. But. Uh, it was a very difficult fire today, and, and the, the fire companies, Bristol Borough, and the uh, surrounding communities that assisted did a great job. Thank you. Any questions for Herbie? No, thank you. The only you question for I have is uh, smoke alarms you still have. Yes. And if people want them put up, you will, not you personally, but somebody will go install them. Right. And just call the borough. Yes. They can call the fire chief number, leave a message. What is that number, Herbie? I'd say it's 785 4501 extension 27. 785 4501 extension 25. 27. 27. 25. Get a mayor. 215 785 4501 extension 27. Right. Actually, if you dial into any of the borough numbers, I believe it gives you a, a list of right. extensions. So any number that they dial in, the fire chief's extension is 27. Chief? I just want to comment on, uh, we took part with several other chiefs with Ben's campaign, Lock It Up, that was launched by uh, District Attorney Matt Weintraub. <coughs> it's a gun safety campaign. It's uh, Unfortunately, it's in response to the uh, senseless death of Benjamin Sith <coughs> Smith, two years old, who died uh, from a self-inflicted gunshot wound from his father's weapon. It's just about firearm safety. We will have a gun locks available for free to the public at the police department. Um, we'll push the campaign out a little bit harder. We'll get some literature. Um, but again, just to avoid any type of senseless deaths um, such as that, we'll have those options and we're going to take part in that. For the chief. Patty. All right. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank number three um, firehouse. We attended a banquet, um, Joe Saxon. Um, Tony Riccio, Greg was there, and Herbie was there, you and I were there. It was a very nice, oh, Mr. Dillon, I'm sorry. Um, it was a very nice banquet. The hall is beautiful. It's state of the art. If you get time and you don't normally go to bingo, you should stop by. It's going to be, it's, the facility is beautiful. I couldn't be more proud of it being done in my ward and, and thankful to everything they've done to make it what it is today. Um, another note, 
we had uh, a roundtable discussion on opiates with DA Matt Weintraub, and we had um, Chief Henry, and we had um, who else was here? Rescue squad. But anyway, we had the rescue squad. What's his name? <laughs> Thank you. He was here also. It was a really interesting roundtable discussion. We touched on <coughs> opiates and how there is help out there. We had Anna Rosado here who works for them. Um, and I was very interested in, in everybody that showed up and being able to explain to them there is help out there, but some people just don't know where to get it. Um, Anna has said to me she'd like to come back and do uh, another discussion maybe later on in the summer so that people know that there's facilities out there you don't have to have insurance there are some you need insurance but there are facilities out there to help people that are struggling through opiates um, addiction and it's not just something that touches rich people poor people it's something that affects <coughs> everyone so that's something that I, I really enjoyed um, being able to meet with everyone that night and I thought it was a great success um, also, uh, the Women's Place is, wants to have a candle visual in October 2017 in the fall here at the river, which I think it's a great idea. Uh, we're going to look into it some more and take it from there and see what we can do for it. Um, I can't see why we wouldn't do it in our town. They've done it at different places. And I think the river, the way everything is going right now, would be a perfect place for it. Uh, also, I was talking to Matt about a photo contest and I want him to come out and explain what me and him had discussed because we're really looking forward to doing this contest in town where people would send in their photos. They would do one new photo, one old photo. It would be per category. We'd run this for 30 days and then later on pick a winner. So Matt is going to explain how we want to run this. <coughs> Uh, the idea is to create a um, page on the website that allows people to upload their photos. Uh, two categories we're thinking, uh, borough now, borough then. Restricted to one, one picture per category per person. Uh, you have 30 days to upload any content you like. Once all the pictures are submitted, I'll put it together for a borough council review. You guys can pick your top winners and the prizes and whatever they may be. Um, it would probably be at least, you know, give them at least a month, 30 days or so. And then once you have the winners, uh, bring it to council. We can give them something, <coughs> show them on TV, put them on the website. Um, the other real advantage for us is it allows us to really collect a lot of photos that are around town that people have, mm -hmm. either new or old, and use them to just add to what we offer, you know, visually for TV, web, all that kind of fun stuff. Yeah, I think this is a great idea, and I, I think we should definitely start it immediately. <laughs> so I could probably have the page together, submissions and all that kind of stuff uh, by Wednesday. And That's I'll post right. it on Facebook. Um, any comments or, uh, I mean, I was just thinking those two categories to start. You know, we can run it however often you want, whatever categories you like. Yeah. Once and I'm sure created, there's people good. out there that have old pictures. I've seen people put pictures of Mill Street back in the day and stuff like that. Right. I, I think that's a great idea. Yeah, I, people, I think we'll get some really good old stuff. A lot of people digitize their collections over the years, so they have it available to upload. So, um, yeah, any questions? No? No? Okay, also while I'm here, I'm sorry to, we have moved all our videos over to YouTube now, so they are more easily shared online and things like that as well. So all the videos are still on the website, but it takes you to our YouTube channel. Thank you. All right. And last but not least, um, people are asking about the FEMA flood plan that has been changed and of course it's affecting the West Ward pretty badly. And I had to explain to a lot of people that it wasn't something we did, it was something that FEMA opted out to do. And I wanted to see if Matt could just explain how you know we handled this. Because we were trying to fight it, but... Kurt, I'm sorry. <laughs> I know, I'm still thinking about that. <laughs> Sorry, Kurt. Yeah, the match became effective in, in uh, March, I think March 24th, and it was a long process. FEMA's been uh, been telling the county that they were going to launch these new maps, and it was based on their new studies that they conducted, and they redefined what they believe is the 100-year floodplain. Uh, there was very, very little that we as the borough could do. 
we tried to push back and you know explain what an impact this is to our property owners and our residents uh, but there wasn't any flexibility there they basically said that's their belief that's what they're implementing um, so we've actually I think we've done a pretty darn good job you know at first we went out and notified all the affected properties property owners mr. Dillon sent out a letter to uh, all of them uh, Brittany assisted with that and the other thing that we've been doing is we've always been working on trying to mitigate flooding in town so Merle's been instrumental in helping us we've been trying to get grants we've been trying to identify ways to actually do flood mitigation uh, so we have a lot of pending grant applications we're hoping we know that some of the intersection floods flooding uh, some of the intersections flood and we know that uh, some residents see some flooding we certainly don't think to the extent that the mapping reflects uh, but we're trying to uh, come up with ways to uh, hold back some of the water that's being uh, let loose from from up county uh, the other thing too just so everyone's aware if you did get contacted by your mortgage company and it's first time you've been added to a floodplain and you uh, you know you're being told that you have to carry this very expensive flood insurance uh, the last thing you may want to do is go out and spend more money but uh, what you can do for yourselves is hire a uh, licensed uh, land surveyor to do what's called a flood elevation certificate they cost anywhere between six hundred to eleven hundred dollars uh, if you group your neighbors together you might get a discount and it's just a document they surveyors come in you know the FEMA might say your ground level is uh, within a floodplain but maybe your first floor of your home is above that level that's what FEMA requires that's what your mortgage company requires insurance based on is whether or not your home and your living area is in the 100-year floodplain so if you get a surveyor to go out and do what FEMA calls a flood elevation certificate and shows that you're above that base flood elevation that they regulate you can submit that to FEMA and you can actually submit to your mortgage company and no longer be required to carry that mandatory flood insurance um, so and if anyone has any questions you know contact the borough they know how to get in touch with us we've talked directly with homeowners and try to help them through that process it's a little tedious but we'll I did talk to a few again. people and I did let them know I did speak to someone who handles um, flood insurance and he's given me his card I don't I'm not going to say his name because it's not in it's inappropriate but if anybody wants to reach out to him um, he's willing to speak to them also he does some work with FEMA and I also spoke to a resident today who told me it wasn't as bad as everybody thinks it was because he was grandfathered in now some people I don't know if that's true or if that he said because he's been there before it became a flood zone that he was able to get insurance a little cheaper because he was grandfathered in because he had been in at this resident for so long so that's something people need to look into too you know well I think if they have any issues I'm sure they can call the borough and Kirk can get involved and you know advise them in which direction they should who they should talk to and the other thing we did make a map that shows the floodplain I think it's somewhere in borough all here but their FEMA's maps are kind of difficult to read online but we, we create a, a map that shows the whole borough and it, you can really see from the aerial uh, photograph where the where the floodplain is and where it was and, and and you can see whether your house is in the floodplain thank you yeah, that's it. thank you I'm sorry. I'm sorry is there an, uh, an appeal process does FEMA offer that the, 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 the there's no appeal process that we can do borough wide but the really what the appeal is is doing that flood elevation certificate and once you get that document usually your surveyor can assist you but you submit that to FEMA you can do it online and it's a letter of map amendment is what they call it so they'll basically you'll be shown your property will be shown in their floodplain but they'll have on file that they've accepted that flood elevation certificate so it basically throws an asterisk on your property that says you've shown that and that so it's, it's guilty till proven innocent they're saying you're in a floodplain until you go out on your own and and look it might show that you're in a floodplain and you just spent 600 to 1100 dollars and you were told what you already knew but if you do find out that you're above that floodplain it could save you yeah more than that each year in not carrying the flood insurance all right real quick because it's already nine o'clock uh we have applied for a grant for the community development block grant and we have a an agreement to put in more handicapped curbs 
So we were successful in receiving $120,000 to start doing some more handicap <coughs> curves. So again, with Kurt's effort and Jim and the people that we have, you know, working with us, it's another $120,000 that we're getting to do more handicap curves than we wanted. So you want to just touch on it real quick? Kurt? It's a competitive process. A lot of municipalities apply to the county. The county gets this federal fund and then distributes it out to the municipalities. Uh, you know, so I think the borough should be real proud that once again they're receiving county funds. Uh, $120,000 will will do. I think 25 uh, ramps uh, at various various locations in town. It's part of the annual ongoing curb ramp projects that we've been doing. I think we've been doing them since 2009, right after we paved the roads. So this will put a pretty big dent in uh, the remaining ramps that we have. Thank you. Thanks. Um, in your review of where this goes, can you take a look at the, by the ball field, a memorial ball field, there are no, I was surprised there are no handicap ramps there coming out from the railroad overpass, and right there at the corner where the batting cages are, mm -hmm. and I think this is kind of, this is a critical spot. I think before it was not as obvious because the, the whole sidewalk was sunk sunk down there, but now if, if, we're, if we're able to, that would be an ideal space, place to put some. Sure. Okay. I'm ready, so. Any questions for Kirk? Thank you. Okay. And I also want to say um, to some of the residents from Mill Street and Cedar that we did go down today, today to the bottom of <coughs> Cedar, because there is three handicapped parking spots, but there isn't a, a handicapped ramp. So the residents in that area are upset because they can see people actually that are handicapped parking there, but the sidewalk is so high they can't get through it. Uh, me and George and Amanda went down there today and we're looking into taking care of that immediately. Um, and also, just to let everyone know, there's a household hazardous waste collection event. There's some dates here that I think we could probably put on the website so people know. Um, where they could drop off their hazardous waste. But again, do not put your TVs out on the sidewalk, the, the trash or, collection. Or alleyway. No, or anywhere. If they don't collect them, it's your responsibility to figure out where to put them. That's it. Tony? I don't know. Uh, the only thing is I had a conversation uh, last week with uh, Bucks County Commissioner Rob Lockery. And again, I thanked him for his help in the uh, in the open space grant and uh, they're going to be in Bristol for a town hall town hall meeting on May 17th and I believe it's at 10 most of their meetings are 10 a.m. Uh, they're going to be at the Bristol Riverside Theater I believe so, um, I think it would, would be good especially if councilmen if they're able to attend and uh, the commissioners have been very very good to Bristol Borough and uh, <coughs> I think it would be good for residents to, to go and hear, hear what the county has to say and I, I'd ask it our, that our comments be positive with them and uh, because it's, uh, they've been so good to us. So I think it's a good opportunity to, to thank them. So I want to see if Matt can put the details on the, on the website. So and it, it is the third Wednesday, May, May 17th. Thank you. Uh, yes, uh, uh, to Mr. Dillon there, uh, I noticed that the field behind the diner was cut, but the uh, the water retention basin needs help, and uh, 13 is starting to look bad, look bad. Could you uh, please tell us uh, where, we, where we stand with uh, with the state concerning, concerning those uh, areas of 13? The borough has not taken over the median strip, uh, nor uh, We've also notified the state about the uh, problems uh, with the uh, that retention basin that we're concerned about the, the summer with mosquitoes. Right. Uh, and uh, they are working with the, the contractor on that. Uh, that one large area by the diner, <coughs> the borough did cut, uh, even though uh, that ground is really technically owned by the county. And uh, we're trying to get the, uh, the state to 
grade it out a little bit better, get rid of some of the boulders, and then uh, hopefully uh, we can sit down with the county to see if they would dedicate that ground to the uh, to the borough for open space purposes. So that's basically where that whole thing is. Any idea what we're going to do with 13 if the if the if the state won't do it? I, I, I expect them to do it, uh, so just uh, okay, see where we're at next month. Okay, thank you. I don't, I don't think anybody here is going to accept that legal strips the way they are right now. I mean, they're, to me, they're a disgrace, so they need to either be redone and the way they came here and presented it, or they're going to have to take them over. <coughs> okay, uh, and on a personal note, uh, Yesterday was my wife's birthday, and the reason I mention that is because uh, on her birthday, she was elected as a senior uh, a regent for the women of the Moose, and I just want to congratulate her. And hey, uh, <laughs> our Nancy, is your little. Here's your birthday gift. You can go home now. That's all I got. Thank you. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, yeah, a few things. The first thing, uh, Mr. Dillon, there's the Plum Street Alley right at the corner of, well, actually behind Buckley, on Spruce and Buckley, right behind that, uh, that row of homes. Needs, there needs to be some uh, some asphalt that needs to be patched up or, or filled in. I'll take pictures of I meant to take them today on the way over, but I'll get them to you tomorrow to picture so you could send somebody out there to look at that. Um, the second thing also, Mr. Dillon, is Jefferson Avenue. I know we talked about there is <coughs> across from the baseball field. I can't remember if it's 618 or 816. I can't remember exactly what the address is, but the curb is sinking into like kind of below the street and I know that we talked about that before and you said it was being addressed where are we with that is there any movement there I don't think there's any immediate safety issue okay. we're aware of the uh, situation and uh, we're handling other issues that are more pressing but we're keeping an eye on okay that. gotcha thank you uh, and then the third thing is and I and I know that Again, Mr. Quattrochi, I, I know that you feel that Council President Di Giuseppe does no wrong, but again, this is not for anything but just to say when he sued me two years ago, right, and I told him at that meeting, I said that he was suing me because, you know, he wanted me to be quiet. He didn't like what I was saying when I was just reading facts. So he used his authority to sue me personally and what happened was it winds up call, costing the taxpayers money is what happens and it and he doesn't really you know he doesn't really care that it costs the taxpayers money he just wanted somebody who had something not positive to say about him he wanted him he wanted me to, to shut up and really to you know just just let it go so and I told him that day I said listen you can sue now, you can do whatever you want, but it's a frivolous lawsuit, and when it comes time to it, I'm not going to forget it, and I'm not just going to just let it go. So two years later, it has come to a head, and Mr. D. Giuseppe went and he said he wanted a mutual drop of the lawsuit. And I told him that I didn't sue anybody. All I did was read facts, and I got sued. I don't need to drop anything because I'm not being sued. He has the lawsuit. He could drop it. He decided that he's not going to drop it. That's fine. So a Dragonetti letter was sent to him. A Dragonetti letter is essentially is either you drop it or you're going to be held personally liable, you and your attorney that wrote it. So, Mr. DiGiuseppe, I guess I'm asking you in front of counsel and the rest of the where are we with this lawsuit? Are you dropping it? Mr. Devine, I, I retained an attorney. Mm -hmm. You retained, I guess, Mr. Hornstein that represents you. Mm -hmm. You got the two attorneys handle that. Okay. Well, do you think that you have any responsibility to tell the borough residents why you feel it was necessary to sue somebody 
and then want to drop it, and it, in the meantime, it's costing them money. Would you like to, to explain well, that? I think that, first of all, it's not costing the taxpayers anything. Oh, it's not? Second of all, I paid for my own legal defense. Mm -hmm. And if you want to hire Mr. Hornstein, I don't think he charges you, but I'm sure he does it for nothing. But let him deal with my attorney. Okay, so are you going to I continue? I asked you in December mm -hmm. if you wanted to walk away from this with any omission of guilt on your part or anything. You said I'll let you know. Okay, well, so admission of guilt of what? Nothing. Just forget about it and move on. Okay. So you said publicly you'll let us know. Mm -hmm. So we're now in May, and we're going into an election, which you're already put in your literature. So, look, I'm not going to sit here and defend a lawsuit or a frivolous lawsuit. If you think there's something, you could proceed in any direction you want. Okay. Well, I mean, that, so that's what I'm not going to discuss it with you. So. Right. But I just, wanted to, I just wanted to let the residents know, when we talk about raising the bar and doing things and looking <coughs> good in front of people, right, it starts from the top, right? It starts from the top. And when you have a council president that feels necessary to threaten lawsuits, not just against me, threaten lawsuits with other people who just voice their opinion on Facebook, right? It's comical. And we all go along with it because nobody stands up because they're afraid to say anything to go against their friend or whoever they feel <coughs> controls, you know, runs the borough. And that's the reality. Whether people like it or not, Mr. Cotrochi, you included, that's the truth. So I don't remember you saying anything to Mr. D. Giuseppe. Do you think this was worthy of a lawsuit? I don't think this conversation is worthy of my time right now. So that's <laughs> why. Why, and why is that? Like, because it has to do with, listen, it's a friendship. I respect that. You have a friendship with Mr. DiGiuseppe. You also have a business. You guys are in a business relationship. So it doesn't matter, right? You're there to protect, you know, you're there to protect yourself, your assets, and, you know. Here's the, whole, doing. here's the whole problem. You're right, I am right. You I appreciate you recognizing that. You have a problem with me. I don't. And it's never going to end. So just say what you want to say and let's move That's on. That's what I'm because saying. Because every, say. every month, it's Mr. D. Giuseppe, Mr. D. Giuseppe, Mr. D. You put out a two-page cited letter about Mr. D. Giuseppe. And so it doesn't nothing. matter. I put out nothing. Well, whatever. You're, I put you're, out nothing. You're grouped it. So whatever you want to do, it I doesn't matter. I approved it. Your opinion to me means nothing. Right. If you think that I filed a uh, frivolous lawsuit, do what you want to do. That's uh, the, let the, the courts decide. I told you that in December, and we're now in May. If right. you want to withdraw this case, I have no problem. Both of us walking away and forgetting about it. Okay, Ralph. You had your attorney <coughs> send a letter, Mr. Hornstein, who represents you. So whatever he wants to do, that's fine. Right. So, so it's, whatever it's, you want to do, I don't care. Right, I appreciate it. Right. I'm sorry, Mr. President. What you say? I'm just hoping to hear something from the East Ward on the tax there. If you haven't gotten to that part of the room. Uh, we're not there yet, now. We're still addressing these issues. And, you know, again, Mr. Pezza, I'm sure, Mr. Pezza, that, I mean, you've known me a long time. You've known me a long time. But I, I've never seen you come up and take my defense about this lawsuit. Do you feel... Oh, stop it. What do you mean? What do you mean? I'm serious. You want to speak up? I want you to speak up in it. You've known me a long time. Tony, Tony listen. Know me a long time. The lawsuit doesn't pertain. If you want to move on to borough business, <laughs> These are, this we're is going to turn business. this meeting before listen, they get Listen, this started. is borough business. Don't you understand? It's taxpayers' money that... Listen. It's taxpayers' money. All right. Well, that's what that you're saying. It's what it's All right. It's so done. go ahead. What do you want to say? That's it. Listen. Do you have anything else? No, that's it. Right. What do you have? Um, <clears throat> I just, uh, what the chief had said earlier intrigued me, and I, and I would just like to volunteer my services as a councilman to maybe we could start asking around with our, our local state rep and state senator. I know it might seem like a... Uh, uphill battle at this point in time, but until somebody on the local level really tries to push, I, I don't see it. That's how it's going to happen. It's so really maybe happen. maybe you and I can get together and see if we can sit down with Senator Tomlinson and, and uh, Representative Galloway and see if there's any way to get some traction and see if we can grab some other lo localities to do the same. Appreciate that. Thanks.
That's all I have. Lorraine. Mr. Dillon, um, <coughs> I forgot to tell you this, and I know I've been contacting you for a lot of things, but on West, West Circle and Farragut Avenue, there's an island there, and the curb is broken off. I'd like to see if we can, you know, have the borough workers look at that. And um, I wanted to say thank you to all the people that showed up for the borough cleanup. It was really a great event. Um, I think there's a, there's a uh, group in town, <coughs> actually they work, it's called One SEO, and they work at the Lennox building, and their whole group from work came out and helped and, and that's that's a lot because you know it says a lot about that company that they, they would have their young people come out and work and clean up our town um, I thought it was wonderful and if if you all looked around there was a lot of trash put out you know people got a lot of trash together put them in the trash bags and our borough workers had to go around and pick that up so uh, we should thank them when we see them because they're also doing uh, us a favor. Um, also, I've been walking around a lot, and um, I've been bothering Mr. Dillon quite a, quite a bit. And I wanted to thank George George Walter and the borough workers for all the work that they do um, for us. Um, I know they get paid, but they they address things very quickly, and they do a great job. And I also want to uh, send a thank you out to Father Mooney. He allowed us to, uh, after after mass, sell flowers for raising the bar, and I he, he couldn't have been more courteous. Uh, he shared his uh, cinnamon buns with us, and he was pretty good. So uh, I just wanted to say thank you to him. We have a great community, and I'm glad to be a part of it. That's it. Uh, I have a couple things, but guys. I'll go last. You sure? I'm fine. Well, I'll drop a couple of things. I had quite a few things I've, I'd like to talk about tonight, but in the interest of time. Uh, everybody, I think, is aware that uh, Small Business Week is this, this week, 4.30 through 5.6. Shop local. Uh, last month, uh, we have a partnership. I have a partnership with, the, uh, with Raising the Bar. I handed out the uh, shop local signs uh, to every one of the businesses on Mill Street. Uh, again, first Friday is May 5th from 5 to 8 p.m. You've heard that. Bristol Borough Business Association's 39th Annual Car Show will be uh, Sunday, uh, May 7th from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Grundy Museum, their 50th anniversary. They're going to have an old-time picnic on the Delaware, Saturday, May 20th. That'll be 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. They're encouraging people to come out, bring your picnic lunch, they're going to have uh, rides and games and face painting and music during that time frame. Uh, I always like to say that uh, hooray, hooray, the 1st of May, outside festivities start today. You know, and it's summer, it's almost summer. Trash, one bulk item per collection day. We all got these nice new big uh, blue recycling buckets. It's single stream now. You don't have to separate anything. Everything goes into the one bucket. As Betty pointed out, there's a hazardous uh, waste pickup at Harry Truman High School, May 27th from 9 a.m. to 3. That's no electronics, just your hazardous, flammable kind of materials that you can take there. Uh, Herbie pointed sorry, out. When is that, Mayor? It's May 27th at Harry S. Truman. 9 to 3. And it's from 9 a.m. to 3. Thank you. Um, at the fire today, Herbie mentioned. Um, I give a special shout out to uh, all of our mutual aid companies who responded and helped on the initial initial attack. Can't emphasize this more. You know, there are I think it's 3,200 fire companies across the United States. They're all 98% of them are volunteers. It's so tough to get people to volunteer to be a, a fire firefighter today with the number of hours that you have to go th through for the training. And when I started, <coughs> so there was, you know, you, you went to local school, county school, it was about 40 hours. Today it's over 300 hours. And that's just to, you know, to get on the truck. That doesn't include a lot of the special stuff. So we're all in need of volunteers. Volunt 
you don't have to be the guy that goes in the building. You can come out, you can support your fire company uh, through a lot of different efforts. Um, also, too, um, the chief will be ending his uh, probationary period tomorrow, and I believe will be uh, our full-time chief. Currently is our full-time chief, but his probation period was for one year. But it Responsibilities as mayor, um, I have to do an evaluation of them. I did an evaluation back in, in March. I'm not going to go through the evaluation because that's a lot of private HIPAA stuff, but I'm just going to give you some snippets from the summary of his evaluation. Chief Henry has demonstrated time and time again that he has the ability to continue to manage the Bristol <coughs> Police Department. He has the professional ability to help me as a mayor to achieve some of the goals that I have set for being mayor. Some of those being provide responsible and effective leadership in Bristol. Create opportunities and support all efforts that enhance the quality of life in Bristol. Uh, a police department that is second to none, an administration gets things done, and a, an approach of complete fiscal responsibility. This last year has been challenging for, Bristol, for the Bristol Borough Police Department and for Police Chief Henry, who as a new chief is responsible for guiding the department to meet the needs of the people while maintaining the fiscal requirements set forth by the Borough Council. It's my recommendation to the Borough Council to hire Steve Henry as the Police Chief of Bristol Borough immediately, thus ending his probation period effective immediately. And with that, that's it for me. Thank you, Mayor. I just have a couple things before we go in. Do you guys have anything? No. Just a couple things. One, uh, again, getting back to the goodwill uh, fire company's banquet. I attended that banquet at that point. We uh, dispersed the checks that you guys normally get. And because we we're successful working with Pendel and the redevelopment, we were able to get the money for the Humeville, sorry, get the money for the radios. So because of that, we're able to give you another four checks tonight. And I'm going to present, instead of bringing them all up here tonight, uh, I want to give you the checks for the four fire companies in town that's going to help you guys out. <laughs> I think instead of us reducing the millage because of the money, I think you guys deserve it. I think you should, you know, help help your fire companies out. The other thing is, I met with Mr. Dillon and we went over some numbers. The liquid fuel budget, when we started this road program, I think in 2004 or whatever it was, the first thing we did was Farragut Avenue, Pond Street, all the way to Mill. And you can see over the years, it's been, I don't know, 15 years now since it's been done, or 13 years. You can see roads are starting to, to wear. It's a highly trafficked area. So, and there were some roads in the next program that we, when we did all the roads in town, we still, there were some streets that were in good shape that we didn't have to do, so we just put them on the back burner. But we basically created a model that a lot of places now in Bucks County are trying to follow, which we borrowed this money at Liquid Fuels, pay the loans. And everybody's question was, well, how about if the roads don't last as long as the loan does? So if you could see, there are a lot of roads that are going to last a lot longer than the road, than the loan is going to be for. We're running some numbers with the manager. I think we're able, and I don't know, I think I'm, in, in, by making this statement, I think we're going to be able to spend about a million dollars we're going to have in liquid fuels because the way we're managing and taking care of things. So I like council to think and in June when we come back discuss this if there's any roads or alleys in your wards that need to be redone <coughs> I think we should invest this million dollars back in because a lot of people have alleys and things that we never really touch we did some <coughs> we so let's really think and maybe we could put this million dollar surplus that we're managing properly to go work so again I want to thank Jim for 
its hard work and dedication to this, but a million dollars, we do have you know, liquid fuel, so things are going a lot better than everybody thinks. Mm -hmm. The other thing is I'd like to talk to Kurt about doing some kind of waterfront improvement plan. We all know that that parking lot down there is in dire need of repair. It's a major price tag on this to get it done. I think, again, if we're successful, there's some grant money out there that probably can help us get this done. I mean, uh, we want to just keep doing things that are going to improve this town. So I think that parking lot is something that we really need to consider doing it, you know, at least get a plan and some kind of study. So, Kurt, that's something else, you know, I think we need to discuss down the, down the road. We also had a meeting today down at the wharf. Uh, we're getting quotes or specs are being drawn up to redo the entire wharf. Uh, we met with an electrical engineer, but we also brought in Joe Stallone today, who did most of the electric work down there over the years to try to save the borough some money and explain to the engineer so they don't have to, you know, research what was done. He told them what was done down there, how it was put together. So that's another thing we're working on, trying to bring the right amount of electric to that area for events. So people that are plugging things in, hot dog machines, popcorn machines, you know, food vendors, that we have the right power for all this. So, you know, we got the docks coming in, we want to redo the pavilion, we want to do the electric. I think the sound system, Bill and Michael, is a great thing to put down there. And that waterfront is just going to shine. <laughs> But I also think we need to really look at where can we get some money to redo this park. <coughs> so I like to keep that something on, on a top priority. The other thing is May 4th, this Thursday, is the renter program that we're trying to turn mm -hmm. renters into property owners. I have four people coming uh, that's going to speak on this. And I think it's a good way. You know, there's a lot of people that are living in a home and the house is going to be sold or they can approach the person that owns that property and say look I'm, I'd like to purchase this home how do we move forward so there's going to be some good information on Thursday night at 7 o'clock I hope there's a lot of people that show up to listen to this if you can't make it it will be televised you can listen to it at home if you're here you can ask some questions but again uh, May 4th at 7 o'clock to see if we can get some more people that are that are renting to become homeowners or first-time buyers that are out there that there are some nice programs that I think you would be interested in listening to so with all that being said we need to suspend the rules and there's a few things we need to add to the agenda so we you, yeah you know what? how about if I just list them okay because there's there's three 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 items which were going to be for the agenda for Monday that you want to vote on tonight yes okay so you have those three items so the motion to spend the rules would be to add those three items to the agenda and I think we have three other items we have the do uh, on the harb 301 rack lift there's been an appeal and I think you need to vote on that there's been a resolution uh, to modify that and I think is the goodwill on there the goodwill donation yes. needs to be ratified and the raising the bars request to allow pavilion at the corner of Mill and Pond Street. So you want to get the one person who has I have two. Have all Betty? I have two. All right, so I need a motion to suspend the rules. I need a motion to uh, suspend the rules, please. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Okay. I'd like to make a motion to amend item five from Harbs. This is a certificate of appropriateness of March 13th. To one, eliminate the third floor front roof. Two, add a K gutter, free board, and dental board to the transition between the second and third floor. And number three, add dental molding to the third floor front roof line and the dormal pockets in a size appropriation to the roof. In all other respects, the recommendation of March 13th is ratified. Mrs. questions or comments? No, I'd just like to make a comment that we did meet with Harb last week, uh, Louie, Tony, Riccio, yourself, and me. Um, and we just want them to, I'd like to say personally, thank you for working with us to ratify this motion. I, I would like to make a comment as well, just that 
that um, you know, I just don't want anyone to misconstrue that well, what we value Harb in a in a in a big way. I think Harb is one of the more essential uh, branches of local government that we have, especially in a town like ours. So I, I think they do a great job. Yes. The only thing I would like to say is we sat them in a room tonight. They they came in. The builder was here. They went through item by item. They discussed it. We just made sure that you know they got this done. And I'm I told Harb that. It would have been a hard decision because it never happened in the history of our that this council would have had to vote tonight. So I'm glad they were able to work it out. <coughs> I think both sides are very happy. So with that, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. I'd also like to make um, a motion for the donation that we gave number three's firehouse of $7,500. We, um, we're very proud of what they've done there and all the money they've invested. Mr. Catrucci, questions or comments? Mr. Devine. Yes, I have a comment. Um, to donate $7,500 to, uh, you know, the number three's firehouse, to me, in, in, a, in a time we're always worrying about budgets and talking about for the next year things, just spending money, just to spend money. Like, to me, if you're giving $7,500 to number threes because they did what they were supposed to do, and the, and the project looks nice, but it was already paid for by their insurance money. For us to give them 7,500 bucks is like giving, it's like getting $25 back on a $10,000 gift is what it comes down to, <coughs> if you look at it percentage wise. So to me, it doesn't make any sense to give $7,500, except that just to give it to them for, I, I don't even understand why. So maybe if somebody can answer that question, you know, to make me understand why are we giving number three seventy five hundred dollars and not everyone else who's following Because everyone else did not have a firehouse that was closed for some time. Mm -hmm. They took away their bingo. They were unable to function the way they should have and they did put a lot of money into it. So on that note I think what we did was justifiable. I mean I understand your concerns, but all the other firehouses didn't suffer the way number threes did. But what okay That's well, all that's all I'm gonna say. Well bad, I understand it. But that's what I'm saying is it's the equivalent of, of $25 back no, on a $10,000 product. What's, what it's what benefit equivalent. is it? It's like getting a $25 coupon no, it's on not. a car that costs you 10 grand. Not anything about that. Just, it's just silly. That's all. Just spending to we spend better. to give to somebody, and I don't even know why. It doesn't even make sense. I think what we discussed in the executive session, <laughs> and we were going to ratify tonight, is that they put almost $400,000 of their own money above what the insurance company gave them. And they really took a hit on their account. And this was a small token to show them of our appreciation for the investment they made in this town by staying here and opening up a place that people in this town can use for functions and weddings and christenings and graduation parties that we didn't have before this. They could have they could have just rolled up the sidewalk and quit. But not only they rebuilt. They rebuilt this building and used mostly all their savings they put into it. So it was a small token. We're going to vote. You vote the way you want. All in favor? Aye. Can we get a roll call vote, please? We don't need one. Roll call vote. For the donation, Mr. Devine. Aye. For the donation, Mr. Gerard. Yes. Mr. Riccio. Yes. Mr. Devine. No. Mr. Pesa. Yes. Ms. Cullen. Yes. Ms. Rodriguez. Yes. Mr. Catrocci. Yes. Mr. DiGiuseppe. Absolutely. Yes, thank you. Seven yeas and one no and no abstention. <laughs> Motion carries. We have something else? Yeah, I think we wanted to vote on uh, being able to. I have, I, have I, have I have it. You have it? Six issues. I have, I have a few as well. Okay, one I'd like to make a motion to adopt the resolution to approve. <clears throat> The preliminary final subdivision and land development plan for Christian Wagner for tax parcel 4-28-259 for three residential lots in accordance with the conditions agreed to by the applicant as set forth in the resolution. I have a second. I'll second. Second by Mr. Gatroci. Any questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed?
Um, there, there's a motion. I'd like to make a motion uh, to approve the council minutes of April 10th of 2017. Thank you. <laughs> there is about that one. Okay. Shall I have a second on that? Yes. Yeah, you have a second. Come on, Mr. Gatrochi. Questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Uh, uh, and I'd also like to make a motion um, to adopt a change order number three, which would be increasing the slab thickness at Boat Dock and Piers. Uh, the change order in the amount of ten thousand dollars, one hundred and six and twenty-five cents. <laughs> Any questions or comments, Mr. Riccio? Can you just explain what that is? I, I, I just saw you know, the the original. They they did a precast. Kurt, you want to? I could explain it, but they did a precast. The stamp cement was supposed to be a two-inch pour. We decided to go with a four-inch regular sidewalk. Yep. On top of that, we just felt it was going to hold up better in the elements. So they're really charging you for the material, and I mean the labor's the same whether they stamp it at two inches or four inches. So now's the time to get it done. Now's the time to get it done. Any other questions or comments? Very good, sir. Very good, sir. Can I do okay? Good job, sir. Comments. All those in favor? Aye. All those. What else do we have? The pavilion. I'd like to make a motion to um, allow raising the bar to build, put a building at pavilion. the pavilion. I mean, a pavilion, yeah, the pavilion. at the uh, Welcome Friends. What's that called there? On Mill Street yeah, at the Mill Welcome Street. Friends. Mill Street Thank you, Mill Street Crossing. All 13 and Mill Street. There you go. All Do 13 I have a second? Mill Street. Awesome. Second by Ms. Rodriguez. <laughs> Questions or comments? I just want to say that we met, like I said earlier, we met with them t today, and I, I, we need to do what we have to do to make this happen so we don't lose it. Any other questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Do we have anything else? No. I, before we adjourn, we're oh. not. Guys, I'm sorry because I meant to talk. Okay. The street sweeper's been out. They've been giving warnings. I talked to, uh, to the sweeper last week, and he said nobody's moving their cars. So when yeah. you get, you know, I want everybody to know it. So if you get tickets next week, don't come in and say nobody told us. And is the was the drug collection for, pre for the prescription drugs forty two pounds? Thank you very much. Call it before we. Done, I just want it before we adjourn. We're not meeting Monday night. Uh, everybody knows there's a major election that's going to take place in this town on May 16th. I'm asking everybody to come out and vote. And I think this election comes down to, as you can see right now, who do you really want to run this borough? Whether it's the direction we're going in right now, or do you really want change? So I think it was proven tonight that this is the change and this is the direction we want to go in. So with that. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. There you go. Motion by Mr. Riccio, second by Mr. Conway.